In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, we want to model this uh, USA Embassy in UK. So you can see in these images there is a facade which we want to model in Grasshopper, uh, in Rhino Grasshopper. And we're going to make these sections. So let's just take a look at them here. This is the building. Uh, I'm going to also show you a video about this and then we're going to start this tutorial. And as you can see here, uh, we can make this in Grasshopper, that's really easy, and we can control the number of these patterns we have, uh, increase or decrease that. Uh, we can change these, this parameter and produce different results. You can see that I can change this number. And we can also change the distance here. And also another distance we have in this tutorial we're going to talk about, which will control this section. And then we can just simply make those models. So you can see that this is going to be the models we have. And we will finish this tutorial. So this tutorial is going to be a parametric facade, similar to this, as you can see. The new U.S. Embassy will open later this year in London, and from the moment it was announced, it sparked controversy. First, because of its astounding $1 billion price tag, and secondly, because of its modern design. The Embassy, which resembles a giant glass cube, is located in a former industrial site south of the Thames River. It was designed by the Philadelphia-based architecture firm Kieran Timberlake, and it includes a ring of ponds and gardens around its perimeter. The London Embassy is one of many in development as part of the Excellence in Diplomatic Facilities initiative, which kicked off in 2011. And before we start this tutorial, if you're new to our channel, uh, consider subscribing because we have weekly tutorials about uh, Rhino and Grasshopper based on architecture and design. And also, uh, if you want to get started, I will put up a video up here for those who are beginners in Grasshopper. You can watch that and know why you should learn Grasshopper and also a one-hour tutorial for the beginners. Uh, there is also a series of tutorials we have for our course, so if you want to enroll, uh, enroll in our course, I'm going to put it up here. Uh, you can check it out, so you can see those lessons, and you can go to our website to enroll for our course. Okay, let's get started from scratch, and what I want to do is to, uh, you can also download this example from our website, so I'm going to uh, make a complete base surface for this. Uh, we can go to the surface here and use this rectangle one. Going to select a vertical here. So here we go. Use the shift key to make that auto and here we have. That's the base surface we need. And uh, we're going to put that into grasshopper. So let's go to the params and use this surface the bifocals plugin so you can see that and I'm going to set that to the surface so turn that off and we can right click and internalize so we will have that in grasshopper so if you go to the launchbox plugin I will put that in the description uh, you can use these panels here and I'm going to use the hexagon cells here okay so if I just put that and give that to the surface uh, we can define the number of the U and the V divisions so maybe from to 16 and I'm going to put that for the U and the V. We can increase that. The most important part is that we can use the parameter T parameter to change that. That's a number between 0 and 1. If I give that and increase the number, you can see that this is uh, going to give us the base pattern. So if you look at this, you can see that this is based on something like this. Okay. Let's just go to the yellow, maybe you can see that better, okay? So this is the unit I'm going to focus. Uh, you can see that by increasing that number, it's going to be okay, but you can see it's in this direction. So I'm going to go to the uh, utility in the lunchbox and use this reverse surface direction. I'm going to pick up that, give that to the surface and the output to the here. And you can see that there is a reverse option. So it's 
the three is reverse the UV. That means the changing the UV direction. That's what we want. So we can just right click and set an integer to three. And you can see that that's what we need here. Okay. Another important thing here is that if I uh, change this number into an even or odd, you can see if I give this a nine, uh, there is a problem here. We have to put that, I prefer to put that onto an even number. So double click and change those to even number. So we can just uh, close the pattern. And remember, you can always play with this to fix it. Okay, we can increase that and maybe just increase this. Okay. Here we go. Now what we need here is to pick up uh, those uh, cells uh, which are inside. We don't need these cells, okay? These are not needed and also these here, okay? So what we want to do is to pick up this. Uh, we have talked this also in our course, so if you want to know more about logics, you can go to our course. But for now, for those who want to know a free tutorial about this, we have a tutorial about uh, dispatch, okay? So we have talked about this. I'm going to put that up here if you want to just take a look. But let's just do that. Uh, I'm going to say dispatch those cells into two groups. Okay, we have to define a true and a false. So the logic behind that is that to say go to the curves and use this explode thing to explode those curves. Uh, you can see that there are two sets. Uh, some of them are four, some of them are five, some of them are six. We have to pick up uh, those we want like this one, right? So these are the base cells we need. I'm going to go to the sets and use this list length tool. Just put a panel to this so you can see what I'm doing. These are going to just count uh, the number of the segments we have here, right? So if I just say uh, we want those which are like six, maybe, we can go to the math, go to the, this operator tabs and pick up this equality, right? Let's just pick that up. The first number, maybe we just need the six. We want to find those who are uh, six, okay? You can see that there are some who are going uh, some of them are going to go to true, some of them are going to go to false, and then we have to give that to the dispatch pattern. A problem here is that also this input is in groups, so you can see that this is in different groups, but this input is not in groups. That is also obvious with a graphical interface that Grasshopper has. It shows a, a line with this one, which means it doesn't have any groups, and this one, which shows it has groups. So what we want to do is to flatten this output, okay? If you don't know about flatten or graph, you can also watch this. So I'm going to put that up here. Uh, but uh, we have also a complete section of this in our course. So let's just make that flatten. And it's going to pick up two sets of curves. You can see that we have the list A and list B. Let me just turn everything off. You can see that this is the list a and this is the list B. This is completely great if we want to pick up those which are inside. That is completely okay. And you can see that we have, if I bake that in Rhino, we will have this cell and this cell and this one, but we don't have anything here, right? So that's exactly what we need. Okay, the next part is how we can make these sections here. That's not really hard, and it's obvious we have to pick up some details here, okay? So I'm going to show you like this. I'm going to make, uh, let's just go to yellow. Uh, I'm going to make a section like this. It's going to move the center a little bit forward, and it's going to be like this. Another one here, I'm going to forward that, make this happen. And then we will have another control here, which will can also control that section. We can lock these sections together. That's going to give us the exact results, what we need. So let's just go here and pick up those points. Uh, I'm going to say uh, curve, explode. Going to list item and pick up the vertices, okay? Because we have lots of curves here and perhaps you don't know which point is the number one, I'm going to pick up one of those curves by using the list item tool. 
and that means picking up, for example, this one. And seeing the first number is here, right? The second one is here, exactly what we need. The third, and so on, okay? So remember we have this. Now I'm going to make a line from the curve, go to the line with two points. The first line is going to be like this. The second line is going to be like this, two, three, four, five, perhaps. That's it. And the two, that's a three and a four. So that's exactly uh, three lines we made. We could also just pick up the segments of this up and down, but I wanted to use the same algorithm for all of these to make it simple as possible. Okay, now we have to go to the curve and pick up this point on curve tool. It's going to be simple as this one. Let me just uh, put a curve here because the reason I'm doing this is that when I finish this algorithm, I'm going to copy that also for the, those lines, okay? It's going to be simple. So this is the center of this point, this line. I'm going to move that in the Y direction. Y. And you can see it's going inside, so I'm going to put that minus X to put it outside. We can give a control on this, so maybe from 0 to 2.5. You can see that. Okay. So now what we want to do is to make a complete uh, line like this. Uh, that's also simple. It's going to be like a curve. I'm going to use the polyline. Right? We have this first one. We use the shift key, the second one, which is here, and the third one. Okay, perhaps we can go and delete this list item. So it's going to go to all cells, and you can see it's completely okay. That's controlling that, okay? So now we can go for the next part. So let's just copy this. It's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to make that easier with connecting this one. This is the first point, the second point with the shift key, and this is the third one. I have it here. Then we have to just make a copy here, bring that down. This is the line. The, these are the two points. The first point, shift the second point, which we want to make, and the last one is here. That's it. So now we have uh, three different sections. We can just turn this off. We can connect them together to make a complete loft section. So I'm going to go to the surface and use this loft tool. The first section is the shift key, the second section, and the third section. Okay. You can see there is a problem with the direction. That's not really important. You can go to the loft options and select align sections and it's going to align the sections, or you can just fix the direction. Okay, just turn everything off, and now we will have these modules on the surface. And you can see that we can control that with uh, the numbers we gave here. With this parameter, it has to be bigger than 0 0.5, so I'm going to put that up from 0 0.5 to maybe 0 0.9. Okay, that's the range you can just play with this. The 0 0.5 will give you something like this. Okay, now what we have to control is the movement. Okay, for the top and the bottom, it's going to be the same number. So I'm going to put that 
for the y direction, the same number here. This is going to control the up and down. You can see that this is going to, let me just show you. This is going to control the up and down. And at the center, we can just decrease that. And it's going to give you the section. You can see because it's a smaller section. Okay. So that's how we can do that. And we can just bake that into layer one. That's how we have that. If we want to make those windows behind that, we can go to the launch box and use this quad panels. Give that to the surface and the UV division. We will have these windows. And now we can just use this frame to give it a frame, maybe 0.85%. You can see that we have the window. So I can bake that into layer one for the frames, uh, the windows maybe into layer two. You want to give that different materials. And the third one is to put that into layer three. Let's just close this one. Now you can see it's completely okay. From the windows, we can just go and select the layer three. Put that one a little bit forward. Okay, you can do that in Grasshopper 2. Modules are working on the facade. That's really beautiful. And this is the magic of Grasshopper. You can just make anything from scratch and define the parameters and make those uh, and change the numbers based on your project. So it's going to give you the complete uh, patterns. You can control those uh, at the top and the bottom and make this happen like that. Okay, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and like this video and also comment below what do you think, how was the tutorial, and see you next time.